is not the best to work with. This is not appropriate for a game jam because most of them are being played in the browser anyway. If you are thinking about doing something like this or you're trying to figure this out because you want to release your game onto Steam or whatever, um, then this is sort of how you set that up. You, you get a separate viewport. You want to do viewport scaling, you get a separate viewport. It's that simple. Hi guys, I'm Isaac, I am Chef Dev, and I have done it after four days. I, I mean, it might be weeks for you guys. I don't know like how long, how close together I'm going to release these videos. Um, I've sort of been making these videos in bulk. Anyway, in my uh, tutorial on how to change resolution, sort of the old fashioned way, um, I mentioned that Halo Infinite had this great way of reducing the resolution without actually uh, changing the frame rate. They must have been doing something with the viewport where uh, you could reduce it by like 70% and uh, everything else would remain the same. So the UI would remain the same, uh, everything like that. And I thought that was really cool because um, when I was doing that tutorial, I was sort of showing people how to, you know, make a a resolution changer but it basically changed the entire window size and that's sort of like an old school way of doing it and the reality is like if you're changing your resolution you're not doing it because like the game couldn't detect the right resolution or it was you know like whatever old school reason you know we had weird resolutions you were playing a game that only supported you know like a square box kind of ratio you know whatever it was it was not because of the reason that you're going to reduce resolution these days, which is mostly for performance. Like I can't really think of another reason why you'd need to change the resolution if the game can detect the resolution of your screen, you know, um, unless it's not supported, like, you know, you're holding a ratio, which is still fine. You can still do this this way. And I think it's sort of a much more elegant way of handling these kinds of things you can still give people the option to like take it into window mode and resize it however they want i guess but i guess like it's just another way of doing things and i think the way that halo infinite does it is really cool and i really wanted to figure out how to do that in the godot game engine and you know it, it took a little bit of trickery but i was able to do it and i'm going to show you guys how i did that and sort of demonstrate what it is that i'm talking about here um, it's not going to be like a formal tutorial step by step because this is kind of like, you know, it's, un it's an unusual thing to want to do anyway. And to be honest, like it's kind of not good to work with, at least the way that I've done it. Maybe there's a better way to do it, but I'm just going to show you how I did it because it was really fun trying to figure out how to do it. Um, so I'll give you guys the background essentially. Actually, you know what? I'll just demonstrate it first and then I'll take you guys through how I've done it. So. I've also got this um, output here so I can show you guys the FPS that the game is outputting because I'm going to show you not only how you can reduce the resolution but how you can upscale it too if you wanted to do that for any reason. Um, so I'll just start this game. This is basically just a fusion of a couple of different things that I've worked on in the past. So I've got my FPS um, template here and also like the scene from the digital camera tutorial if you guys have watched that. So this is a scene from Matthias Tossens um, to get me to a low enough frame rate to be able to demonstrate why you might want to do something like this. But I'm still going to be running at 60 FPS even at 1080p. I'm going to pick up this gun um, and we can shoot it. It all just works as normal because my FPS template will just pretty much work anywhere you drop it. You can download that from my website by the way. So. We've got my options menu here and under video we now have something called resolution scale and it's at 100 um, and we can turn this up so we can double it which basically puts it at 4k at that point if you're upscaling for like better quality you probably want to turn fxaa on and we're going to turn up the msaa as well i forget what those stands for sorry about that so we can turn that to this and obviously i'm down to like 30 frames because as I've mentioned in previous videos, I've got like a dinosaur GPU. So this is pretty hard for my computer to do. It's a simple scene, but it's enough. And I'm running at 30 frames. So just imagine for whatever reason at a 4K screen, I'm trying to play this game and it's, uh, it's not really working that well, but you know, it'd be really nice if I could just like reduce the resolution and keep playing. And that's why these options exist. So now I can go, okay, well let's bring it down to like, you know, 
whatever percentage I want really because it just goes wherever the UI doesn't change you know this is the beauty of it um, I'll probably throw it up what I was working on previously and now it's like okay now it, it runs at you know 60 frames and I'm going to turn FXAA off because, you know, um, that looks like shit at lower resolutions and everything runs perfectly fine. Now imagine if I had an even, you know, more dinosaur computer. I've got onboard graphics or something like that and I need to reduce the resolution scale even further. Now, in the example of Halo Infinite, they only let you go down to about 70% so that you can only go to like, you know, it's basically 1280 by 720. Um, but I've been at, I've dropped this down to 50 just, you know, to go to the extreme to show you what you can sort of do with this. You definitely don't want FXAA on, MSA can stay where it is. Um, and then it's like pixely and everything, but as an example, the UI is still normal. It hasn't been changed with it. And the game, if it could run over 60, would be drawing more than 60 frames because it's capable. But you know, like if you're having trouble with performance, like if you've, you know, released a game and people are complaining that it doesn't run on their computer, you know, this is a lever that you can give them to pull to make it easier. I mean, obviously you want to make sure that your game is optimized, as optimized as possible, but there's always going to be, you know, that, you know, 5% of people that no matter what you do, their computer's not going to be strong enough to run your game. So give them a lever to pull to be able to you know, make this possible for them, make it playable. And I think this is a really cool way of doing it. Um, so how am I doing it? Well, let's get out of this. So what you need to do to make this work is to think about how everything works in viewports. So at the root of your scene, you have a viewport. And most of the time when you're changing your window size, you're changing your resolution, all that kind of stuff, you're working in the base viewport. But if you wanted to do scaling, but you didn't want to affect the UI, then you need to have two viewports, obviously. So that's what I set out to do. Now, originally I thought I'll stick my UI on a separate viewport and I'll just have everything running on a separate viewport and the base viewport can do the graphics. That doesn't work because everything, you know, you've got your top level viewport, anything below that is going to be affected by the resolution change. So your base viewport needs to be the one that holds the UI and then you need to set up a second viewport to hold the graphics. So this is where things get a little bit tricky. And I'll show you, I had a scene manager. This is from another template that I have called just base game template. It's just got menus and ways of loading scenes and handling sound that you can download from my website. And I took that and I basically set up a viewport container called the game scene with a HUD and a viewport. So what I needed to do was essentially eliminate the change scene function that you would normally call in Godot to change scene and essentially re-implement it. And what I've done is I've got something called scene load and I've got also a current scene so basically, I'm going to load the scene, I'm going to instance the scene, and I'm going to check if it's in a group. And the groups at the moment are called menu and in-game. And if it's in-game, we'll set the in-game variable to true, and we'll add the scene to the child game scene, which is, um, even though the viewport container is called game scene, I believe in the scene manager, game scene is actually under the viewport. A little bit confusing there, but, you know, I'm not going to... Be releasing this or whatever it works that's the... so we add the scene to that viewport and we set in game to true which will make the this viewport visible um, and it will also set the game active which will tell the uh, options menu the in-game options menu to be available because that also needs to be on a separate viewport it needs to be on the base viewport which means it needs to basically be set up here which it is here um, and so we don't want you to be able to access that while you're in, you know, like the main menu or whatever else, but it needs to be there and we need to tell it when it's available. And then we'll set the current scene to be S, which is just the name of the node that we're loading up. So we basically just keep track of whether you're not, whether or not you're in game or if you're in a menu 
and we'll just make decisions accordingly about where we should put the node. If it's a menu scene, like if you go to the menu, main menu, you're going to load in a scene here. Um, one of the biggest challenges I had was, well, what happens when you start the game? How do you decide where to put it? Because as far as I know, like that first scene that you load and when you use like um, get tree change scene, uh, there's no way to know what kind of node that is. You can't control where it goes. Um, so, and that's my main reason for just overriding that and setting up this and putting it in a separate viewport. Um, I've got like a first scene, so this in my project is uh, set up as a as the main scene and all it does is call the first scene and then just delete itself because then I, I can just go scene manager change scene and I can play this uh, animation for loading and load the scene that I actually want to load into and control it that way. So that's sort of the architecture behind it. Um, what about the menus? Well, that's all pretty straightforward. I've got a bunch of signals set up for my video options. So in my options, um, if you followed along with my other tutorials for resolution, you'll see that I've got a dictionary full of standard resolutions that you can change to. If you want to go to like a windowed mode or whatever, they still work. But I've also got signals for viewport scale, MSAA and FXAA, um, and basically, those signals are tied into um, those kind of options. So we've got essentially here, I'll see if you can show it. You've got like a slider, we've got the tick box, we've got another slider. And basically, if you change any one of these values, I'll emit that signal. And we'll also got the slider change for the resolution scale where we'll calculate the size of the resolution. So what we're doing here, this is sort of the main calculation that we're going to do. We get a slider scale percentage and we get the percentage and we'll just set that as the text for the actual slider so we know what number we're at. Um, but the scale is actually just, we're going to get the viewport and we're going to times it by the value divided by 100. So basically just taking that as a percentage and we're going to either upsize it, downsize it based on that and then we're going to emit the signal viewport scale scale and so that comes back down to the scene manager here where we will actually connect up those signals so we've got the main menu options video and we've got those signals and they're just connected to the game scene and those signals they basically just do the calculations they're all pretty simple obviously um, if we're talking about changing FXAA and MSAA, um, if you do that and you, you want to be targeting the, the viewport that actually, that's actually handling your graphics because you can't just um, use the general get viewport, set use FXAA or set MSAA because you're going to be doing it on the viewport that's just holding the UI and it's not going to do anything. So you need to be targeting the actual viewport that your game scene is holding. Um, you basically pass a value onto that and just call the appropriate um, function on the viewport you actually want to hit. On the viewport side of things, it's pretty straightforward as well. I'm just setting that stretch value um, to the viewport set size. And then, um, and I have a second function for the, just a sharpness calculation to sort of compensate for some of the blurriness that you're going to get as you reduce the resolution. So um, that's there as well, which is nice. Uh, it's not entirely necessary. I'm not sure if it does any good. It's just something that you can do. Um, and maybe I'm even interpreting that wrong. I don't know, but um, I've just put it in there. It basically just ramps the number up as the resolution drops. Just to demonstrate a few other things that I've sort of got going on. So there's a couple of different things. You, so now it's disabled, like you can't change resolution when you're in full screen mode. Obviously that would defeat the point of having a resolution scale. You can still get out of full screen mode in theory if I can click the button for some reason. The resolution options are sort of, they're only available when you're in a windowed mode. Um, and you can't change the scale once you're out of full screen mode as well just because that's kind of like you're doing too many things at that point i feel like so if you go into a windowed mode then yeah you can change the resolution to whatever you want 
but you can't go back to full screen because the full screen mode, what it's going to do is essentially just detect the size of the screen that's active and set it to the resolution of that. So, you know, you don't need to tell it what resolution if you want to take it back to full screen. Um, and then if you actually want to, and then if you actually want to um, change the resolution at that point, we're going to maintain the, the aspect ratio and just change the scale at that point. So um, it should work in most scenarios. Like I can't really imagine anything where this wouldn't be, there'd be like something missing. Because if you move it to a screen, like a wider screen or whatever, I think it would still work. Like it should just detect the resolution. I don't have a widescreen to test it on, but um, as far as I understand, that's that's it'll just set the resolution, at least the way I've set it up, I think. Um, anyway, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know if I've missed anything here. Um, I'm trying to think what other things I had to overcome. I had to set up my HUD to be completely separate from my game, which means my character needed to have all these... Um, the signal set up with the scene manager for when it makes a hit and when it um, wants to zoom in and all those kind of things. So that was a little bit of a challenge. It's not that bad, but you know, it's something that you need to keep in mind. And that's why I'm not doing like a full tutorial. I said I wanted to do it. I did it. It's not the best to work with, especially if you're just prototyping something out. Like maybe if you're ready to release a game and it's like even for like you know the whole reason I made this base game template was to work with uh, game jams this is not appropriate for a game jam because most of them are being played in the browser anyway and if they're not like chances are the graphics are going to be simple enough that you're not going to need these kind of settings it's just over the top for a game jam so it's here like if you are thinking about doing something like this or you're trying to figure this out because you want to release your game onto Steam or whatever um, then this is sort of how you set that up. You, you get a separate viewport. You want to do viewport scaling, you get a separate viewport. It's that simple. Um, and then you just need to uh, set up the uh, change scene function yourself, <laughs> essentially. Um, I'm sure there's more complicated things to it because obviously I'm just doing this as a single one-off. I'm not actually trying to work this into a game. There might be other things that you need to consider. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. This is how I did it. Maybe there's a better way. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. I'll see you guys in the next one.